What's up everyone? My name is Ryan, aka Juno Ryan, and today we are cracking the case on the puzzle that is picking the perfect hook for your fishing application. You walk into a tackle store and there is just this enormous wall of hooks, all of different sizes, shapes, colors, everything from these giant 16 O's all the way down to tiny little number 10s the size of your finger. And you just wanna catch some fish. You don't really know what you're looking for at all. Well, today's video, we're gonna go over really the basics of how to pick a hook for your fishing application. What you doing, man? Um, making a video about how to pick the perfect hook. Right. That sounds pretty lame. Why aren't you fishing? Well, you know, it's kind of windy outside and fishing trip got canceled. Oh, oh that's stupid. Yeah, I'm just gonna go through the basics. Well, this is you know, lame. Small hooks. I'm gonna go watch that video that you made where you catch the colorful fish off the rocks here in Japan. That okay. seems like a much better time. You do that. Thanks. Sorry, that, that guy just acts like he owns the place. Anyways, where was I? You're struggling to find the hook that you need for your fishing application. Well, you're in luck. We're gonna go over all sorts of applications and put you in the best situation to catch some fish. I'm gonna cover live bait, I'm gonna cover dead bait, and I'm even gonna cover if you wanna change your hooks out on your lures or what hook to pick for your lures. First, we'll talk about live bait. The number one thing you need to do when you're picking a hook for a live bait is you really need to match your hook to the size of the bait that you're using. You want your hook small enough so that your bait can still swim free enough and natural enough that it looks like a real presentation. But you also need a big enough hook that it can really rip out of the bait that you're using and it's big enough that it can hook the fish and endure the length of the fight that you're fighting it and get it to you whether you're on shore or in a boat. In most cases, if I'm stuck between hook sizes, I'll usually err on the side of a smaller hook vice a larger hook because plenty of big fish can be caught on tiny hooks, but not a lot of small fish can be caught on big hooks. Now, obviously this is all in a spectrum of possibilities and I've seen giant hooks catch tiny fish and vice versa, but if you're stuck in between sizes, for most of you guys, I'm absolutely gonna recommend to go with the smaller hook. Usually, I won't sacrifice hook size unless I'm in a situation where I need a very, very strong hook. And in that case, all I'll typically do is switch from a lighter wire hook to a heavier wire hook. You also hear this called gauge. Essentially, it's just the thickness of the metal. So you could have two 4.0 hooks one with a very light wire and one with a very heavy wire. If I'm fishing around pretty giant structure, I'm gonna be fishing really tight drag, braided lines, and not gonna let them pull very much, I am gonna fish a heavy gauge hook. If I don't need that heavy gauge hook, I'm typically gonna just use a normal one because it allows the bait presentation to look more natural. You're not weighing down your bait with that hook as much. And you, just because you don't need it, you don't need to waste a really expensive hook on something you might snag on the bottom, honestly. Really quick here, if you guys like today's video, if you're learning something, please be sure to leave it a thumbs up. Or if you have a question, leave a comment in the section below. Let's get back to the video. Typically, when using live bait, the only time I'm going to use a treble hook well, we haven't covered what a treble hook is. A treble hook is basically three hooks on one. That's what they look like. Only time I'll use a treble hook when using live bait is on what I call a stinger rig. So I'll typically have two hooks on one rig, usually a single hook and a treble hook. And I will have a bait hooked in the back of the head as well as the tail. You use this when you're targeting things like kingfish, mackerel, things that have very sharp teeth and they're, when they feed, they're known to swipe at a bait, typically cut in half first, and then sometimes they won't even come back for it. So by having that treble hook in the tail, you're able to catch them on that initial swipe. That's really just something that I've come to like to use over the years. It's not the only way you can do it with two single hooks, but for the most part, I don't like to use treble hooks with live bait. Typically do better, I have better luck with singles. Moving on to dead bait. Dead bait, most of the exact same principles that we talked about for live bait, just move right on over to dead bait. You wanna match your hook to the size of your bait so you don't really impede 
the natural presentation of it. So if I'm fishing a bait that's the size of my finger, I don't want to be using a hook that's double that size. It just, it looks stupid. You know it's not a natural looking presentation. However, with dead bait, we do have a little bit more flex in our hook size because our bait is motionless. So you're not impeding the presentation as much. So typically with dead bait, what I try and imagine is what my target species is. If I know specifically what it is, I will pick a hook to try and match that target species within reason. So you don't have to go super crazy here. Pretty much a size 10 to a 7 0 it sounds like a broad spectrum, but that size range will catch 98% of the fish out there. Let's say we have a hook, a bait the size of my hand. A 6 0 is plenty of size for that. Bait the size of my hand, hook goes through, that will work fine. And I can catch pretty much, I can catch most fish out there on a 6 0 hook. The few times that I would use something like these giant 16-0 hooks, it's when I'm targeting an absolute monster. So when we're land-based shark fishing for giant bull sharks, hammerheads, tigers, or we're targeting goliath grouper, just giant fish that are absolutely out of the ordinary, not what the typical angler will target. Now, what also comes with those giant fish is giant baits. So you'll see us use these giant, a full-size bonita, a fish this big, that so many dudes would be stoked on. We're using it as bait to target these absolute sea monsters. So those are typically the only situations you'll see something giant like this 16-0 Mustad. You'll see 20-0s all the way up to 25-0s some company are making these days. So that's one of the few situations that you'll use something giant like this. For catch and release fishing, I typically like to use what's called a circle hook. Now I haven't explained this yet, but there's two different types of hooks when you look at single hooks. So either a J hook or a circle. J hooks are tried and true, been used for decades, actually centuries. It is a pretty standard fish hook. When you feel a bite, you yank on the rod and it sets the hook into the fish. Now the thing with J hooks is you will get some fish when they swallow a bait, you'll hook them in the guts. So if you intend on keeping those fish, not a problem, not a big deal. Typically you can dig your hook out, the fish is going to be dead by the time you dig your hook out. Or you can just cut the line if you really don't want the hook and just throw your fish in the cooler and get it later. If you're doing catch and release fishing, you, I highly encourage most anglers to use circle hooks. So the way a circle hook works is you don't yank on it, you don't set the hook. When a fish picks up a bait and it's swimming away from you, you essentially just put the reel in gear and you allow the line to come tight and you just slowly pull back on the rod. And as the fish is swimming away, the circle hook will turn and it'll catch the fish in the corner of the mouth. They are proven. Many guys prefer them for almost all aspects of fishing. For me, it really just depends on the situation. Sometimes I prefer J's, sometimes I prefer circles. And there may not be an exact science to it, but a lot of the times it just gives me more confidence to use one or the other. So. A lot of this is personal preference, but if your intent is catch and release, I highly recommend circle hooks. It is much better for the fish. You're gonna have a lot less gut hooks if you use a circle. Now let's get into choosing hooks for lures. Now for, I'll start off by saying that for the average angler, I just recommend you fish a plug with the hooks that it comes on. For the most part, that is gonna put you in the best situation to catch fish. Now, if you watched my Recent video where I was catching mahi offshore, targeting them with a lipped plug. I mentioned how I like to use single hooks on the plug, not because it hooks fish better. Honestly, I'm under the assumption right now that it doesn't hook fish as well, but it's for a safety reasons because when you bring a flailing fish into a boat full of people that may not be experienced with fish, that fish is jumping around, shaking his head, there's a large potential for someone to get hooked, especially if there's treble hooks. Honestly, when it comes to single hooks on plugs, I don't recommend them for a lot of people just because it seems like they don't get the best hookups with some fish. Now, when a fish is hooked, it stays really well. It's a wide gap. It holds on to more meat of the fish. I've even made a video about this in the past, and honestly, 2019 me would disagree with 20. 17 me dang i've been doing this for a little bit 2017 me and the fact that i wouldn't recommend it for a lot of people to change their hooks on their plugs 
When it comes to changing your hooks on your plugs, only really change them if you have a specific reason. If it's safety, if it's catch and release and you don't want treble hooks putting a bunch of holes into fish, if you want to switch them out for barbless hooks for that exact same reason because it just doesn't put as big a hole into a fish, or if the plug that you bought has really, really light wire, crappy hooks, like on a Zara Spook for instance, typically they don't have very good hooks. So in that case, I like to change them, but I'll change them to typically a stronger treble hook. But for the most part, 90% of the time on a some type of plug, I recommend you all don't change the hooks on them. They're gonna be fine. When it comes to a jerk bait, soft plastic, swim bait, for the most part, I just, uh, I stick to the exact same mantra that we talked about when it comes to dead bait and live bait, matching it to the size of your bait. If it, it should not impede the action of the soft plastic that you're using. Additionally, if you're fishing around heavy structure, you're fishing for really big, strong fish, you might wanna go with a heavier gauge hook or a heavier gauge jig head. If you're fishing for very small fish with a finesse setup, you can get away with a super light wire hook. It's really just application based. So put a little thought into what you're doing. You'll be able to pick up the perfect hook for your situation. Some overall take home points from the video. You hear me, you've heard me say it once, you've heard me say it actually probably like 10 times. When you're picking a hook, you want to match it to the size of your bait, whether that's live bait, dead bait, or a lure. That is really the primary thing you should be looking at. Secondarily, you should be looking at a what fish you're targeting, if you are targeting a specific fish. If not, refer back to point number one and just try and match your bait to, or match your hook to your bait. So, so much that it doesn't affect the action of the bait, whether it's live, dead, or a lure. Y'all, I hope you learned something in today's video. If you want more informative content like this, absolutely drop a comment in the section below detailing what you want, what you wanna see. I read all of the comments. I try to, com try to reply back to all of you guys. Sometimes it just becomes too overwhelming, but I really do appreciate those comments, so keep them coming. If you liked today's video, please make sure to leave it a thumbs up. It does really big things for the channel. It allows me to keep making videos for you guys like this. Guys, that is all the time I have. I appreciate you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in that next video. Later.